this month we began to talk about vision this month we began to talk about vision so when you read the bible when you read the bible there are two types of things there are things in the bible that are purely purely spiritual but there are also subjects in the bible that speaks about the spiritual and natural parts so jesus will give a parable and speak about money management so in talking about vision i noticed something and this is very common in christianity around our parts of the world most of the time we over spiritualize something and the practical things people have to do to move forward we never talk about it the practical things we have to do to move forward never talk about it so that's why in the this month's teaching is to really teach and challenge us to a productive living let me say this something you know a lot of people pray but prayer alone will not do all the things you want can we be honest a lot of people pray but prayer alone will not do all the things you want there must be some there must be some things that you need to do to go forward and those are the things we're teaching at this season as a church all right so we're going to talk about vision we're going to talk about vision let's turn our bibles to habakkuk chapter 2 in verse 2 habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 so maybe the first thing you want to do is that cultivating the habit of bringing the bible to church something to write those are very good habits to cultivate cultivating something to write even me that i'm your pastor have you noticed i always come with a note like like even sometimes the notes are so turned because it's like look at my notes pages like i'm talking to you like pages and when you come to my house you know my 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 brother-in-law my, sorry my brother sent me some notes my bible study notes from 1994 1992 i'm telling you he sent me notes some of them were like really torn old some of them rattled it in the place but just really nice to see the things it was nice to see what i was thinking when i was that young you know 1992 some of you were never even born praise the lord Oh, you are. Some were not even born. I mean, we were not born in 1992. Just wait. Let me see. You weren't? <laughs> you guys should call me grandpa. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I had like all those Bible notes from when I was younger. You know, it's really good. Or, I look very nice. Let, let, me, let me check. Oh, I can't check. I, I will check in the picture. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tywo. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, then, let's get into the Word of God. So, we're talking about how to birth massive vision, how to birth massive vision. Yeah. Gen, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says this, and the Lord answered me. And what the. Let's read from verse 1, just for context. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And it will see what it will say to me. That means when you want to hear God on a matter, most of the time seclusion is important. What does seclusion do? It enhances focus and it prevents interference. One of the reasons why people don't hear God is this. The state they are in life is too noisy for them to hear God. The state they are in life. So sometimes they think they heard God. What they actually heard is their personal opinion. So he says that this is what I will do. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will have an attitude of sensitivity and will wait to seek what he will say to me and what I will answer what, when I'm improved. Chapter 2 verse 2. He says, and the Lord answered me. He said, write the vision and make it plain upon the table that he may run that read it. And one of the things I said last week is this. When God wants to change the life of somebody, move the person from level zero, move to level to person five, God moves them by putting vision in their heart. When God wants to move you from level five to level ten, God moves them by putting vision in their heart most people do not understand that when there's a vision conception within their spirit it's because god wants to change their level god uses vision to bring discomfort for our current state so i'll give an example so there's this single girl she's been single all her life all of a sudden she enters a season of life where there's this intense desire to get married it can also be a guy there's this intense desire to get married 
and what happens is that god has put a vision within her that has caused it this equilibrium and there's a new there's a new beginning sometimes it's an entrepreneur that is doing so well in business at his own level maybe he's doing 50 million per annum and it's so wonderful and when god wants to change that person from where he used to be to where he needs to be god puts a vision in his heart the person goes back to work and sees the 50 million and is totally upset he said what is this to me this was some kind of result he was celebrating before this was something he was happy for before but what changed because he's now seeing because this is what vision does vision there's a gap between your present and the future what vision does is that vision brings about that dissatisfaction you begin to say what is this 50 million not as though you're not grateful but in your heart there's a deep desire for something bigger there's a deep desire for something else let's look at hebrews chapter 11 oh this is very powerful hebrews chapter 11 when people have vision one of the things you will see is that they will not behave like other people because vision will give them their own specific direction when people don't have vision they want to talk like other people achieve what other people have achieved because there's no specific thing they're going towards look at hebrews chapter 11 and we're going to read we're going to read from verse 23 the bible says by faith when moses was born he was hid three months what does that mean at this time the king had given the commandment that every male child must be killed or surrender to the king he says but there was something why look at this he said by faith when moses was born it was hid what three months so when people are carrying vision sometimes they will go into hibernation they are not on social media they are not on facebook because they are incubating listen to me the people that make waves are not on social media let's just make let's just be clear i'm telling you the people that and some of you you are getting confused you are confusing noise with impact i'm telling you you are confusing noise with impact the people that make waves are not social media what is going on in their spirit is very powerful it's really powerful going on there he says when they saw moses they hid him listen to me people there at some times you will disconnect from people because you want to work on your life you know what i'm talking about you want to work on your life and if you keep opening up to people people will distract you you want to work on your life you want to work on your marriage you want to work on your health you want to work on your job you retreat because this is a time for personal investment he says that he says this and by faith moses sorry by faith moses when he was born his parents hid him three years three months see why did they hide him look at the next line because they saw the reason why they took a detour was there was something that they saw you know every you know some of you are here every weekend you show up in a social gathering i mean that's okay that's your vision but there are people that understand i cannot afford to show up in every place because what i'm going to the bible said there was something they saw about they, uh, moses they had to hide they had to hide there is a place for incubation this is i'm saying so because this is a generation that does not believe in incubation there is a place where you withdraw you see god in his mercy even himself hides you and he hides you because he wants to build into you he wants to extract from you he wants to do some significant things in your life and you must be okay with it huh. The reason why is that you will carry weight but let your weight be practice with carrying in the private there will come to a time in your in your relationship nothing seems to be working and when there's no man or woman coming god is hoping that time you used to build character that's what is hoping there's a time in your life you see did you notice something can we get deeper today yes, the bible says this is what the bible says bible says this Oh, very powerful. Bible says when Peter did not catch any fish, what was he doing with his net? It says they were what they were mending their nets. What does mend their nets means? They said this was the net they used to fish. The net was broken. So if they had caught fish, they would have not had time to mend the nets because they would have sent the nets. So they said now we didn't catch fish. Let's go and mend the net. Mend the net means they were building structures. He said mend the net means they were building structures. He says we've caught nothing. I've caught nothing we're building structures so sometimes where there are no results is because there are internal results that we're working on 
Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. That's a great time to clap. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. Some, most single people, they say, I'm single, single, single. Listen to me. You don't understand. The single face is preparation face. Let me tell you some things you should learn when you're single. Number one, learn to share. Men, hope you heard me. <laughs> so, so I'm just waiting for someone. You're not waiting. Learn to share. Women, learn to share. Start by buying gifts for your mom. Start by buying for your, for, your, for your father. Your brothers and sisters. Start by buying for your co-laborers, your co-workers. Start by buying for your pastors and leaders. It's learn to share. What do you learn again? Learn to talk. Many people don't know how to talk. Especially men. Talk to a man and listen. How do you feel? I'm okay. What does I'm okay mean? So when he gets into a marriage, he cannot talk. And the woman is frustrated because the man cannot talk. The woman thinks that he's choosing not to talk. He's not like choosing not to talk. He's not trained to talk because our upbringing as men. Because when a girl is crying, stop crying now. When a man is crying, sure, I can't be crying. And men don't cry. So from when we are young, we put the psychology that men don't cry. So you are telling the young boy, suck up your emotion, shut up, stop back it. That's what a man does. What you are learning, what you are doing is you are training the child that will become what? Unemotionally responsive. I'm telling you. So what do you do? Learn to talk. If your if your boyfriend or your husband cannot talk, teach him to talk. How do you teach him to talk? How was your day? Fine. Ah, Oni, I know it was fine, but I'm just asking for details. Is there any highlights? He said, "Oh, highlights. Oh, yes. My boss is and this and this and this. Okay, thank you. And that's it. Learn how to correct in love. What you did? Learn how to correct in love. Learn how to forgive, because relationship is all about forgiveness. Nobody will hurt you more than your partner." Oh my God. Let me go to the musicians. No, but you didn't hear me. Did you, 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 didn't, you didn't hear me. I thought you were going to bang it. <laughs> I'm telling you, the person you love the most will hurt you the most. The reason why that hurt is a function of proximity. Oh wow. A hurt is a function of what? Proximity. You have to be close enough to hurt me. If you drive on the road and a, and a taxi driver say idiot, does it matter to you? No. So if so, if your husband says it doesn't matter to you, yes, because it's, the proximity is what affects you. Are you getting it today? Yes. So you must learn to forgive. In fact, if if you ask me. I want to marry someone, what should I look at? Look at how the person forgives himself. You know why? People that cannot forgive themselves cannot forgive you. So I'll say, how do you know if they can forgive themselves? When they make a mistake, see they apologize. If they can take it. Some people will beat themselves over for the next two weeks. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That person is going to make a terrible partner. You know why? If he himself is beating himself over for two weeks, when you not make a mistake, what will happen? They will beat you for one year. So I'm only saying to you, I'm only saying to you that sometimes you need to be separated for building. Some of you, the way you, are be, you, you were raised, you don't know how to work hard. I'm telling you, there are people that sleep 10 hours. I don't know what to do. How can a human being sleep 10 hours? Some of us are trying to sleep 6 hours in a day. I time myself to make sure I sleep 6 hours. I work hard. To make sure I sleep six, I work hard every day. My PA has to remind me, you have to sleep. Because they work so much, we just sit down there. Ah, ah, ah. They all say that two hours. I, I've slept three days, I couldn't sleep. So these are things you learn. You learn when you are defective in this season and let God begin to build you. The reason why is that in life you must give yourself to that building. Some of you, you need to learn how to work hard. Some will not just work hard. You need to learn how to work smart. That hand work is inferior to mental work. Hand work is inferior to mental work. People that work with their hands will work for people that work with their brains. Hand work is inferior to mental work. 
people that walk with their hands will work for people that walk with their brains and africa value handwork have you seen a plumber before have you seen a bricklayer before they work so hard in the sun they are paying the day two thousand five hundred why hand work is inferior to mental work so the bible says this what, what it, it says so you see that separation you see that separation there so let's keep going now let's keep going now. <laughs> let's keep going now verse, verse 24 he says this that the parents kept him because this was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment so when you find the fact that you have a vision and your fear is there it's because the vision has not swallowed you once the vision swallows you fear will begin to dispel once the vision swallows you fear will begin to dispel see it's one thing to have a vision but the books is one thing for the vision to be on the inside that's what i'm going to do the vision needs to be on the inside when you get to a place that you are living you are breathing you are talking you are demonstrating that vision so what does vision do for us one of the reasons people have asked me this before someone says pastor Balaji, i love your drive i love your excellence i love how you push things he said but how can i have this kind of drive i, I said what do you mean he says well, if it's a new year by january february i have drive by march is gone i said because you don't have a living vision and if you have vision vision gives you drive sir if you have vision vision gives you drive if you have vision vision gives you drive there's something about vision vision comes with hunger there's something uh, vision comes with hunger vision comes with hunger vision comes with hunger after the 29 verse 19 26 verse 19 paul told the king he said oh king agrippa i am not disobedient he said this push is a vision push some people say they need capital the jewelry on your neck is more than capital someone says i have no customers customers don't come and meet you it's vision sometimes when i want to pray my flesh doesn't want to pray i when i wake up at night sleep 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 30 more minutes one more hour but when i remember where i'm going when I remember what I want to achieve, when I remember you, <laughs> I said, No, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. From the place of my sleep, hallelujah. La Makaba, I'm struggling, but I have to. Because vision gives you that drive. They say, Fast and pray for your business. You can't fight, can't fast. You don't have vision yet. When you have vision, fasting becomes easy for you. Vision gives you drive. Someone says, I have a problem with saving. You don't have a problem with saving. You have not found the reason to save if they tell you that your mother needs drugs this amount every month or else you will die you will save when house strength comes, how do you save oh you're laughing now how do you save when house strength comes so the thing is this the reason why you've not been able to say something if i have seen i will touch it you will not touch it he will just don't have a strong enough vision to save when house strength comes how do you save because all of a sudden there's a reason to save so you don't have a saving problem what do you have you have a vision problem why vision produces drive and motivation someone say hallelujah, hallelujah. someone say hallelujah. hallelujah someone say hallelujah. hallelujah i mean when our church started you will not believe this i will walk two hours there's no transportation fair i will walk on my feet two hours two hours two hours walk so are you tired tired for what is the vision that makes you see there's a way you walk when you have no money that your brain comes alive doing that work you'll be having strategic ideas you'll be having it management business at, management business at home you'll be having you know you can't have some kind of meeting while you're watching big brother abba someone said oh there's a vision i said have they finished i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know what they have finished or what they have started 
All I know, there's one person in the house called White Money. That's vision. It's not as if I don't plan not to watch television, but ah, where's the time to watch television? Vision gives you drive. Some people, if they have their chance, they will go on holiday every month. If you have that kind of life, you have a false life. Why? Your vision should be holiday for you. Why? Vision is the place where you are yourself. It's where you feel free to be yourself. So, I don't need to escape. This is, this I'm doing is vision. This, this now. If you see the other service, I'm here. I've been awake before most human beings in this auditorium. And I'm sure I slept later than most human beings in the auditorium. By 3.40, bam, my body's awake. Every day, by 3.40, bam, my body's awake. So I say, what do you use to stay awake? So I say, what do you use to stay awake? I say, you use responsibility to stay awake. You drink responsibility. You drink responsibility. It makes you stay awake. Because you think about it. You know, I'm thinking, one lady came here. He said, I came from Port Harcourt for the service. How can you now come careless? You now come to the stage. Uh, you know, I was tired yesterday. No! Those things, this, this is what vision does. And so it keeps you awake. As they've come, they must not go empty. So as a pastor, it makes you preach your heart out to people. He makes you pray your heart out to people. You could be anywhere else. You could be doing a lot of things. I value the time that you came here. This one hour first means you came here. Some of you, you, you drove from a long place. Some of you came from a far place. I want to make sure that it's what your investment, both spiritually, you live and be like, yes, I did something on my Sunday. But that is what must happen when people come to your business, when they come to your store, when they come to your product. It's not just prayer. They must feel it's value for their time. But what drives that is vision? What drives that is vision? What drives that is vision? What drives it is vision? Vision must drive it. Praise God. Vision is powerful. Nothing changes a man like vision. Ooh. Nothing. Vision changes a timid man to a bold man. Vision turns a lazy man to a disciplined man. Vision turns a spender to an investor. And the reason, the only thing is that they've seen something different. Listen to me. If you see something not motivated, if you can give them enough vision, they'll be motivated. And by the way, people are motivated in life. What they're motivated about is just different. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Everybody's motivated. You see someone that cannot sit down in church for two hours. Let him get for TV. He will sit down for three hours. You should understand that I cannot, I cannot sell. Let him be chasing girl. He will sell everything he has. He will tell the girl, you don't know me. Don't go to this place, don't go to that you just, He will be selling them up and down. Because vision changes people. So, the thing, the reason why you've not grown, some of us I want to develop, the reason why you've not developed is because you have not embraced vision. Once you embrace vision, vision will change you. It will change you from an irresponsible father to a responsible father. You will just change. I'll be like, no, 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 no. I, I can't be this kind of father. Because you have received the vision as a father. It will change you. That's the power of vision. I'm praying today that you will not just read the vision, you will catch vision, sir. Yeah. Uh, that amen. I say you will catch vision, sir. Yeah. I say you will catch vision, sir. Yeah. I say you will catch vision, sir. Yeah. So that your change will be natural. Your change will be natural. I mean, if you knew me before, I used to have a terrible walking posture. But you, you, you remember? I, I, let me tell you, I used to walk. I would drag my feet. In fact, sometimes I, would look, I, 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 I used to walk. I used to do like this. I used to walk like that. I just looked at myself one day. Who goes somewhere and walks that way? Simple thing, just the way you walk can change your mood. Yes, yes, yes. I say, I'm a king's kid, yes, sir. walk like one. There, there are ladies in this church that when they walk, you think they own heaven and earth. 
Meanwhile, it's just that body they have. Oh. Even car they don't have. You just see them. Oh, you know, just see them. Just, you know. Someone says, don't mind them. They are rehearsing for their destiny. Yes. Keep it up. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Someone say 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 glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. It's okay to rehearse for your destiny. Just okay to rehearse for your destiny. I never used to put my hands like this. I used to put my hands like this as if I just abetweted. No, 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 no. I don't do that again. Vision changes people. Vision changes people. No, when I was asked first, but I was when I talked to people before, I used to look down because I, I couldn't look at people's face. I was that shy. I was that shy. I couldn't look at people in the eyeball. If you talk to me now, if I want to go, I look at you in the eyeball. What if fire will enter that place? <laughs> I was that shy. In fact, I remember that someone told his friend, well, I mean, we said that, oh, I have a pastor who is extremely, extremely shy because I couldn't look at people. What changed Peter? Peter was a shaky person, couldn't have, didn't have backbone. Peter became the person that addressed over 3,000 people. They got born again. Vision. He told them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They were fishers of fish. How did they become fishers of men? There was a vision. He said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Are you catching something today? Yes, sir. Are you catching something today? Yes, sir. Are you catching something today? Yes, sir. Vision turned this Tamra called Moses into a political leader that led five million people out of Egypt vision. Moses was a timid stammerer. He ran out when there was opposition. Moses became the person that faced Pharaoh. Faced him one on one and faced him several times. This was the same Moses that he didn't face Pharaoh. He just had Pharaoh had head. He took off. Vision changes people. Question, you want to be changed? You need something to change you. It's a vision that you need, sir. You need vision to change you. You need something bigger than yourself. You need, and that's why one of the beauty of being, being in this church that you can catch a vision from our church that will change you. Well, sometimes I ask people, will you do this in church? They say, I can't, I can't, I can't. They really feel they're letting me down. What they don't know is that they are letting down the opportunity for growth and development. And that's what it is. Because how did God change me? It, by calling me and giving me a vision. How do I change people? By calling. So if I come and say, will you be a solid? I just say, Pastor, I will. I don't know what it's going to take, but I will. Why? Change me, sir. Change me, sir. Give me vision, sir. Give me vision, sir. Give me something that will change my life. I said, will you be a pastor? Pastor, I see, pastor, I'm a drunkard. But you have said it, I want to be. Why? Give me something that will change my life. We, we, we want to start a bank. Are you interested, pastor? All I've left is a business of 10 million there. But this bank is going to call one billion. But I can try. Give me something that will change my life. That's vision. Something that will change. Don't leave me like I was. Give me something that will change my life. When our leaders lead, you can tell there's no iota of vision in their mind. We go to Dubai and come back to Dubai less. Did you get my English? Yes, sir. We go to Dubai and come back to Dubai less. It's, a, it's a civil we went there and they blindfolded us. We get there, we enjoy everything. We come back, can't be replicated. We forget. Men of vision are people that see and create tomorrow. And Lord Tosa. Men of vision are people that see and create tomorrow. Men of vision are people that see tomorrow and create tomorrow. They see tomorrow and create tomorrow. They are living in today, but living in tomorrow. Men of vision live in today and tomorrow at the same time. Men of vision live in today and tomorrow at the same time. One leg is in today, another leg is in tomorrow. Pastor Deboe said as far back as 1990 something, Pastors, my desire is that I can take you to the, to, the, to the moon to go and have a retreat. There was no Tesla or Elon Musk as I when he said it. But now, people are now going to the moon for excursion. How does a pastor think that way? Vision. How do you see your tomorrow? If you don't see your tomorrow, you cannot get there. 
it say as far as your eyes can see will i give to you it's only what you see you have the right to become do you see a great marriage when i talk to couples that are fighting the first thing i want to see is what they see well once the couple say this this i'm like ah this marriage is going to be destroyed you know what the the husband sees divorce the wife sees separation how can you help them the reason why is that no matter what you do you will head in the, in the direction of what you see you will always head in the direction of what you see no matter how careful you are is what you see you become so when you see the um, uh, divorce uh, divorce yeah. <laughs> this is a waste of time and the reason why it's a waste of time that that's what they see why the principle of vision as far as your eyes can see i will give to you glory to god Hallelujah. i said glory to god Hallelujah. i said glory to god Hallelujah. let's read proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 and i want to talk about how to get vision as we close how to get vision as far as your eyes can see question what can you see some of you all you can see is living in nigeria and this is what i always say a lizard in nigeria cannot and never become an alligator abroad location does not change people vision changes people location does not change people vision changes people if you're a lizard here yeah, anywhere you go you become a lizard only that only that the lizard there is just a basic lizard the lizard have sizes that's all that's all if what do i mean if you're on the bottom of the ladder here if you move abroad you will still be on the bottom of the ladder only that bottom past bottom that's all here is bottomless praise god All your friends have moved abroad. Who is not on the bottom compared to the people there? They are all on the bottom still. So the pastor, no matter what you say, I'm going abroad. I didn't say don't go. I said go. How would you know our message is working if you don't go and test it? <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. What vision do you have as a wife? What vision do you have as a husband? What vision do you have as a business person? Someone asked me, he says, it was talking about dreams, and this is about dreams, like when people sleep, um, this dream, like not dream like prophetic dreams, just dreams like vision, like, oh, I have all those dreams. He said, why do people forget their dreams? And it was a good question. Question, why do people forget their dream? The answer is very simple. People forget their dream because they wake up. What does that mean? As long as you keep dreaming, you will never forget your dream. Once you wake up to reality, that is when people forget their dreams. People forget their dream because of reality check. As long as you're saying that, I want to have this salon, I want to have this, yes, you mean it's okay. But once you enter life and see dollar versus naira, okay, that's reality. People forget their dreams before they wake up. So what do you do? Be dreaming and be awake. Praise the Lord. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So I said, Proverbs 29 verse 18. What does the Bible say about vision? The Bible says this, where there is no vision, the people what? Can you give me the New King James Version or the message or Living Bible? New King James Version. See what the Bible says here. Where there is no vision, people perish. What does it say now? It says, they cast. It says where there is no revelation, people cast up what? Rest people just live anyhow. Let me show you what the restraint is. This is a lot of money here. If I didn't rubber band this money, this money is just everywhere. If I'm holding it, it's just falling off. What I do? I use a rubber band as a restraint. And say, before it falls off or drops off, because if I just drop it right now, it's going to fall over the pulpit. What I do? I take the rubber band and I do what? I restrain it. The money becomes compact. The money becomes holdable because it's restrained. When you see people with that vision, they are everywhere and nowhere. They can date anybody. Everybody is okay to them. 
Is it, is it not just a man? It's not just a woman. Because there's no vision. When there's a vision, you can't date some people. Just imagine me date someone and say, I want to be a lingerie model. How can I date you? It's okay to be a lingerie model. That's not the problem with, that's not the problem with, it's not the problem with lingerie model. So after end up in the money, you just go ahead and see a magazine and you see my wife on it and say, oh, mama, with lingerie. Oh, <laughs> you know, you just see mama. You say, you say, you say, you say ah, your pastor's wife has big hair. So you say, yeah, it's a pastor's wife. <laughs> it's a, it's a, you know, It's not because you can't be a lingerie model, but some visions are not compatible. Yes, yes. Can I help you today? Can I help you today? If you want to make Semo, you don't look for you don't look for Gary. Think about it. If you want to make Semo, you don't use Gary. If your marriage is a Semo marriage, you look for Semo what raw material. If your marriage is a Gary, marriage you look for Gary, what raw material? You don't take Gary hoping it to become Semo, it will be frustration. Are you getting blessed this morning? Are you getting blessed this morning? Some of you say, I want to marry someone, like, and then, uh, uh, you know, some say, I, I just want to marry. If you want to marry an entrepreneur, you must know as a wife or your husband, you'll be supporting from time to time until the business attains stability. Hope you understand that. So if you are not ready for that kind of roller coaster journey, look for someone in paid employment. Because it's consistent, stable income. It may not blow, but it's consistent. But that entrepreneur, if it blows, it has blown. Even you come to this church, is there not something that brought you to this church? You don't you know what that church is? That there are other ch- great churches, but there's a way they think. When you go there and say, oh, "You is a demon," just, oh, yeah, they give you assignments. <laughs> when you come here, we pray, but we say, "Oh yeah, use the head." Our church is watch and what pray. Watch is using the head dimension. Pray is using the spirit dimension. So I said, yeah, my mother-in-law is a, is a witch. I said, I agree it's a witch. But let me hear, what have you done to her? And when she came to us, I didn't feed her. I said, that's true. She's a witch, but you didn't feed her. You yourself, you are looking for witch, witchcraft. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it says, where there's no vision, so I showed you what a restraint is. Question, is there something that restrains you? What restrains how you talk? What restrains how you spend? What restrains how you behave? Is there something that restrains you? Or you just do whatever you want? And if you do whatever you want, there is no restraint. There is no vision. So I can just say, let me tell you, till kingdom come, you can never hear me say the F word. Either on pulpit, off pulpit, junior pulpit. You can, it's not a matter of pulpit. It's not in my system. Have you ever heard Prince Charles use F word? Is it about being born again? Royalty don't use some language. Royalty don't use some language. Restrain. In in the bus, they refuse to give you your change. You will see madness. Oh, you, you know that. You know, you, you know more bad more more bad because of Twitter, you can't walk away because you must show yourself because of Twitter. You will say more bad. You sometimes you meet a group of guys or girls fighting in the office and insulting one another. And these are executives. Say, what, what are you talking? Don't be as if you're a saint. I know they want to be with the GMD. You think we don't know? I'm like, be the better person and walk away. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do I get vision? So how do I get vision? Three ways God gives vision. Number one, Exodus chapter 3 verse 3. Exodus chapter 3 verse 3. This is my prayer for our musicians that they can catch vision. They can catch. I'm praying for you. You catch vision. I'm praying that you catch vision. When you catch vision, you will cast off restraint. You will restrain yourself. There are conversations you will not be in. There are places you will not be found because you see a future. 
there's choir and there's choir they know you even people in the choir know that this one has vision when i was in the university i was a, i was a student pastor the chaplain of my university gave some pastors money to help their fellowship i said ah, pastor you didn't give me he said you don't need it i said why do you say you don't need it he said the people i gave can never find what, what i give them he said but you can find it because eyes can see eyes can see what is the vision you have one store what is the vision of this store this is your clothing line what is the vision your career what's the vision in every office there are those that just walk and those that have work with vision those that work with vision they're trying to know the md because they're trying to climb high they've seen the future there how do you get vision extra chapter three let's just quickly read please Exodus chapter 3. Ah, I pray the musicians cut vision. I pray. I pray. It starts from your association. Associate with your future. How do you cut vision? Associate with what? Your future. Associate with your future. Let your view be so close that you can touch it. You should not be in this church and not have people. You should not have friends. No, this is not that kind of church. This is a church structure to help you spiritually and in life. One brother came, had some challenges. Don't let's even exit the free. If I see people I believe in, ah, there's nothing I can do for them all. But they must pass the test. You don't get money by asking for money. You get money by vision. And you don't tell the vision, we see the vision. If you come around and say, Sam, I have this, or you just talk, I have this, I have that. Who gives you money because of that? The principle of money is very simple. He that is faithful in little will be faithful in much. Let's see what you have done, what you have. We'll add to it. He said, take from he that has one talent. He said, give to the one that has five. You don't raise capital by business proposal. You raise capital by results. You hear what I said? You don't raise capital by business proposal. You raise capital. That's why I've been going for all this band. They've been pushing up on that. You raise capital by results you make the first 15 million and you start with 5 million send it to anybody with proof they will invest in you is someone here today because i'm addressing the key thing the key things around us are things about money and our marriage and our family so i'm addressing it from the bible having divorce a second option and think you have a great marriage never people are people are fighting each other the husband has kept text of the wife all the things she has said wife has kept text what are you keeping it for proof of who will get divorced are you there yes. what are you keeping it for in case something happened and it will happen because faith call it the things that be not as though they were Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you catch vision? How do you catch vision? Exodus chapter 3 verse 3. And Moses said, I would now turn aside and see the great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. I'm going to jump just because of time. The Bible says this. And in verse 5. And God said to him, draw not he near. Pull up thy shoes for the ground. For the place where you are in is a holy ground. Look at verse, um, verse 7. And the Lord said, I've seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. I've heard their cry by the reason of the staff master and I know their sorrows. Verse 8 says, And I've come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptian. Let's jump over. Verse 10. Verse 10 says, Come now therefore, and I will send you unto them that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. It was very clear. It was a vision to Moses. Bring my people out of Egypt. How did Moses get vision? Through supernatural encounter. One way to get vision is through supernatural encounter. That's how I got the vision of this church. I was praying one day and I saw a vision. I saw a tree. I've always spoken about this tree. And on the tree, there were fruits. And there were fruits. And the, the word came. The harvest is ripe and getting ready to decay. Go into it and harvest it. That's how we became harvesters. Hallelujah. I never thought in my life, nobody in our family had been a pastor before me. My mother told me, say, oh, you know that this is not something we did in our family. 
but I saw a vision. The second one people get vision is this. So, so now the challenge that most can say, hey, the vision I want, I want God to show me. Mm-mm. There are three ways to vision. God might not give you a supernatural vision, but there's another way. How do you have vision? Through what? Through deep concern. Nehemiah chapter 1. So, you may not get a vision from a something supernatural. It may be through deep concern. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 1. Let's see how Nehemiah got a vision here. The Bible says, and it came to chapter 1 verse 1 here. Yeah. And the word of the the words of Nehemiah, the son of Akaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Chelusis in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan the palace, that Anani, one of his brethren, came, and he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that escaped, which were left in captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that left of the captivity were in the province are in great affliction. The reproach, the walls of Jerusalem are also broken down. And the gates are burnt down with fire. Verse 4. And it came to pass when I heard this, I sat down, wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. If you read the story carefully, Nehemiah got a vision from deep concern. God did not talk to him about the walls of Jerusalem. As he pondered over it, there was a concern. There are many of you here, there will be issues in our country, issues in your industry. It will be your concern that, what is happening here? You walk in a bank, you see how slow technology is. No, 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 no. I must create a software that will solve this problem. You see the concern. It's a deep concern. Why are we, as a church, now we are, we are trying to build hubs. Each hub we are building is about 50 million. So I said, do we have all the resources? It's not about having the resources. What I notice as a Christian is this. The most accommodating people are thieves and prostitutes more accommodating than christians if you come today as a girl you enter lagos the person that will say come and stay with me is likely to be a prostitute but again we will check does she have evil spirit what is she doing will she take my husband we'll check when you see people under the bridge what did they go to under the bridge this will approach them come why you not come and stay with us When I said businesses, when I was younger, I used to meet in restaurants with people. And I knew that when I met in restaurant, they would look, to look down my business. And I said, no, we can't do this again. We need to find a way to empower people. I don't want to give them accommodation or this dress. You know why? If I do that, I have to feed them. So can I create a place where they can learn skill, where they can work, where they can work and work. When they make money, they can take care of themselves. But it was deep concern. I'm not the first person to know the problem. But some must do something about it. Glory to God. So question, what are you deeply concerned about? That could be a vision. The third thing that vision I've found is this. Vision is found through association. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9. And if you have not planned to give to us a project to hub with the hub, that's something you should be doing right now. That's something you should be doing right now. Your money should be there. Why? As you make it happen for other people, God will make it happen for you. One of my deep concerns, let me tell you, I have deep concerns. Number one, I don't like prayer ministries that is based on devils. I don't like it. Because I don't think that's New Testament prayer. We read the whole of the Bible. How many times does God talk about demons? In the New Testament, Richard in the New Testament, all the prayers were not about demons. How come African prayer, the focus is my enemy, my enemy, my enemy, my enemy. Our focus is too much on evil spirits. That's why we're going backward. It shows in our movies, our movie titles of the past. People turning to cockroach, people turning to lizard. We, people are doing movies of science fiction of the future. We talk of the past just because of the way we think. And you're not going to change the prayer by saying that that's not a good way to pray. Start your own prayer ministry. And if they see results, didn't you hear the testimony? People getting contract $10 million. People getting contract $5 million. People getting, these are in dollars, sir. 
So when I speak, I'm not speaking that because I hate something. I can speak because I have the result. You don't cause the darkness, you bring light. You don't cause darkness, you bring light. Once light shines, darkness cannot. Because I'm tired. You, you see people get out in church, they're cursing people. Let this person die. Listen, what is wrong with us? Where is forgiveness? Where is forgiveness? With all the wrong you've done, if people pray against you, won't you have died? People think, the way people teach religion in Nigeria, it's almost like manipulation and terrorism. If you don't do this, God will do this. I'm like, which God are they talking about? Did they read about Jesus? If you don't tithe, you're going to hell. I don't believe that. I believe you should tithe, but I don't think that God will send you to hell for not tithing. You know why? Because God is good and kind. So let me tell you what God is. God is the kind of person, if you mess up, he will bless you so that you will feel bad and come back to him. This is how the Bible says it. It said, the goodness of God leads to repentance. It didn't say the punishment of God. It said, the goodness of God leads to repentance. And that's the difference between religion and Christianity. Religion wants to hold us in fear and bondage and make us feel bad. God is saying, come the way you are. Come the way you are. That's why some churches who go there, they want you to dress a certain way and do this. And when they behind the scarf, they say, don't wear attachment. Even the usher that is ushering you, behind the scarf is attachment. Why are we all hypocrites? Why can't we have a church where we can be who we are? And if we're walking, let me tell you, in a church, there are doctors, there are nurses, but there are patients that are not feeling fine. In a church, they are both are not okay. They are both are okay. We're all together. It's a hospital. Because sometimes you see someone dressed to the church, and say, ah, how can you wear this to church? Some of us are not okay. We are learning. I told you, say that, ah, he said, Pastor, the way some people dress, some girls dress, I say, if you don't want people to see your husband to see, you know, your husband has eye problem, you know, no eye problem. We'll be following people like that. Just very simple. Make sure you're coming into church, just sit in front, you and your husband, near the pastors, you can't say anything there. You'll be just seeing the glory of God. But the truth is that the church is full of broken people. That's what it is. You know, when pastors make themselves feel perfect, I just feel bad for them. Because who is perfect but Jesus Christ? But they feel perfect so that they can have this dominion over people. You know, the dominion over people that I don't make mistakes, what you do. I'm, I just try to be honest. All of us are work in progress. And, and, and see, the more people know that you are a work in progress, the more they know they can trust you. And they can also get better. Because you're a work in progress. Why does someone get pregnant and they cannot tell us in church? They tell people outside. Because they can't trust us that we'll be human. Why do people have nicotine addiction, sexual addiction, and we can't have a conversation in church? Why? What kind of church is this? Why do people have marital problems and we can't talk to in church? Because people gossip. All the people that are gossiping are the same thing. They're just all the same thing. Someone got pregnant and when the person got pregnant, all of a sudden we begin to talk about the person. All of us are just useless. I'm telling you the truth. Because you that you're talking about someone, are you not having sex? You just got some pregnant. Is that not true? Is it not post? Is it not post that you're using? Imagaya. <laughs> Why can't we just be honest? Every time you point one finger, the remaining three pointing at you. How do you get vision? Through what? Association. They jump to about 34 verse 9, and that's where I'm going to stop. Because I want us to sing, shout, and pull down the roof. Just verse 9 verse 4. Are, are you ready today? Just like, it's crazy. Just like when pastor one, you need to manipulate people to give. You don't have to manipulate anybody to give. All of you come to this church. Is the gen, is it paid for by water? The land, is it water they used to pay? As a responsible human being, won't you pay for services? I'm telling you, you, you. Do you know how many staff we have in this church? This church has over 100 full-time staff. 100.
We were trying to replace this pulpit. They told me that this pulpit, a new one now is about, is about I'm, I'm not sure, the new one we bought is about maybe $1,200. We bought it from Australia. So, the thing is that I don't understand the concept of manipulating people. I believe that we all have the same interest. You should know as a responsible Christian, oh, I attend this church, my kids attend the church. Do you know the kids' church, just the software that prints those things, we pay about $400 per year, per month. We now employ security to stay so nobody can take your child. You know, security are there too because I bless you in Jesus' name. Kwanwalala is given to them. You see Aranis on the floor, the police are there every Sunday. You think they just love us? No! Police office is paid. So there's no need to manipulate. If you are so nice, smart, you can see the cost. You can be like, oh my God, this is my church. Every month I'm going to commit this to it. I'm tightening, I'm committing this to it. I don't think a pastor needs to... If you're, doing a, if, you're, if you're messing up with the money, then we need to manipulate. But if you're not... We, we just bought these cameras. Each of these cameras are 8,000... 8, is it dollars or pounds? See, I'm, I'm, see, we need to build a culture in church. And, and I'm glad I can have this conversation where we're honest, where we're pure, where we're responsible. And that's the kind of church we should be. Don't go to a church where they have to harass you to give. You can do it by your free will. I mean, you never say, me, say, God said there are three, but I will give one million here. Why will I always ask you for one million? I will call you. Allah, right, please come. come. What will you do about this? Are you not blessing the church? Nick, come, what will you do about this? Oh, no, what was it? There are three people here. What's three people here that God spoke to me? What did God speak to me about? <laughs> when there's no food in your house, your mother said, God said that four people will contribute. He said, come, 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 come. We'll buy garlic, we'll buy rice. Is that what they call it? Hey, I'm the father of the house. I'll call you. Who will buy what and what? I know all this is. <laughs> Why should a pastor be manipulating people? I, that's crazy. It's a crazy idea. Because you don't trust that they'll be honest with you. Love you too. Thank you. Praise God. Last scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9. This is, I'm telling you how you can know the kind of church you are in. We will never have to manipulate you to give. Yeah, we will never have to. We will tell you what we need. We will announce it. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9. See what the Bible says. And Joshua was full of wisdom because Moses had laid hands on him. And see the next, let's read the next line together. And the children of Israel, what? Harkened unto him and did as what? The question I want to say is this. Did Joshua have a new vision? No. The vision of Joshua was the vision that God gave Moses. Mo Joshua got the vision by what? Association. There are many of you here, the vision of this church is what God is going to give it into your business. It's going to give it into other areas of your life. Of changing lives. You start saying, I want to do something for girls. I want to do something for... It's going to be that vision. Because it's just vision by association and impartation. Let's pray.